A special thank you to each of our subscribers who make this channel possible. Here's today's story. Israel has initiated its fourth ground offensive in southern Lebanon in the last 50 years, marking a significant escalation in its military operations. The offensive comes after nearly a year of intense bombardment in Gaza, with Israeli forces commencing targeted ground raids on September 30th. This strategic move aims to counter the Hezbollah fighters who have been consistently launching attacks on northern Israel over the past year. The decision to open a second front has ignited a heated debate within Israel regarding its potential consequences and effectiveness. Unlike the densely packed urban landscape of Gaza, the soldiers now face the daunting challenge of navigating rocky terrain that is laced with explosives and offers numerous hiding spots for enemy combatants. Jonathan Konrakis, a veteran who fought in Lebanon and served as an Israeli liaison officer to United Nations peacekeepers, shared insights on the challenges posed by the new combat zone. He emphasized that the topography of southern Lebanon is vastly different and forms a combat area that is significantly larger than what Israeli forces encountered in Gaza. The terrain is very challenging for an invading force and convenient for an enemy like Hezbollah, Konrakis explained. The rocky landscape allows for multiple tactics, including the use of anti-tank missiles and improvised explosive devices IEDs, against conventional military units. Miri Eisen, a former Israeli intelligence officer, recounted her experiences during Israel's 1978 invasion of Lebanon, describing the steep hills and ravines that characterize the region. As soon as you cross the border, you go down drastically and up drastically, Eisen noted highlighting the difficulties of maneuvering through the terrain. She pointed out that there are boulders that serve as hiding spots, and many areas are inaccessible to vehicles, making movement challenging for troops. Experts believe that Hezbollah has constructed an extensive network of underground tunnels within the hilly landscape, with entrances cleverly concealed in residential areas. This strategic advantage poses a significant challenge to Israeli forces who have historically engaged in multiple conflicts in Lebanon with the objective of addressing security threats along their northern border. However, the outcomes of these engagements have often been contentious and debated. The history of Israeli military operations in Lebanon dates back to 1978 during Operation Litani, which targeted the Palestine Liberation Organization (PLO). For years later, Israel launched the broader Peace for Galilee operation, which resulted in a siege of Beirut and a substantial loss of life, with approximately 20,000 casualties by the end of that year. Following an 18-year occupation of southern Lebanon, Hezbollah emerged as a formidable force, bolstered by support from Iran's Revolutionary Guards. The conflict escalated again in 2006, culminating in another ground offensive that left a profound impact on both sides. Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah, who was recently killed in an airstrike, declared a divine victory in the 2006 war, which is widely regarded as a failure for Israel, resulting in the deaths of 160 Israeli soldiers and around 1,200 Lebanese civilians. In his final speech, Nasrallah warned against attempts to establish a buffer zone in southern Lebanon, foreseeing it as a potential trap for Israeli forces. As of now, the ongoing conflict has resulted in the deaths of 14 Israeli soldiers, according to official Israeli figures. Analysts point out that both the Israeli military and Hezbollah have evolved significantly since their last major confrontation. The Israeli Defense Forces IDF, have been studying the lessons learned from previous conflicts, particularly the setbacks experienced in 2006. Eisen noted that the IDF has had the past 11 months to prepare while engaged in combat with Hamas in Gaza before shifting its focus to Hezbollah. In a bid to weaken Hezbollah prior to the ground offensive, Israel intensified its air campaign against the group on September 23, targeting key figures and weapons depots. This escalation followed the detonation of booby-trapped communication devices used by Hezbollah, which resulted in numerous injuries. The bombardment has reportedly claimed the lives of over 1,200 individuals, primarily civilians, according to the Lebanese Health Ministry, while the International Organization for Migration has confirmed around 690,000 internally displaced persons as a result of the ongoing conflict. Hezbollah has reportedly benefited from years of arms transfers from Iran, including ballistic missiles, and many of its fighters have gained combat experience from their involvement in the Syrian civil war. Rabah Alam an analyst at the Al-Arm Center for Political and Strategic Studies, 
emphasized that Hezbollah operates in a decentralized manner akin to a guerrilla army, allowing it to effectively resist Israeli advances in the south. She criticized the assumption that targeting the group's leadership and communications would incapacitate its operations. Monir Shahada, a former Lebanese government coordinator for the UN peacekeeping force UNIFIL, highlighted Hezbollah's substantial stockpile of anti-tank missiles and other weaponry, which the group is currently holding back from use. Instead, it is relying on ambush tactics, traps, and explosives to counter the advance of Israeli tanks. The ongoing conflict continues to evolve, with both sides adapting their strategies in response to the changing dynamics on the ground. That's all for this story. We upload videos every day covering many different subjects, so hit that subscribe button to stay informed. Thanks for watching.